Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in the excellent Bramble the Mountain King. This was developed by Dim Frost Studio, published by Merge Games and is usually available for £24.99 slash $29.99 but gave us all a nice surprise when it came onto Game Pass, so Game Pass your life up. So we play as Ole Ole Ole, Oi 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 as we have to traverse the incredible yet baffling land known as Bramble to get our sister back who was captured by some troll. Now, if you enjoyed games like Little Nightmares, etc., you will love this one. Now, quickly on to achievements then. So, a lot are story related. We also need to find all of the figurines and story books, but the main big pain in the troll ass is we have to beat the entire game without dying. Luckily, of course, there is a cloud save trick to make it way even easier, but you still need to be careful with how you do it, which I will explain in just a little bit, and how I messed myself up, so I have to do another playthrough. Um, otherwise, it is a fantastic game, and one I'm sure you'll enjoy. All in all, you'll be looking at, depending on how many times you do backup saves in places, anywhere between 7 to 10 hours. So, with that being said then, uh, let's do it, baby! Now, uh, dialogue and cutscenes are unskippable in the game, so, you know, just, just enjoy it. Enjoy the scares. Roar. One quick thing I should mention, actually, as well, if, uh, with the not dying through a playthrough achievement, never, ever, ever restart the checkpoint. So if you die, or whatever, do not restart the checkpoint. That will actually count as a death, and you will lose the achievement that way, so just be very careful. So, no matter what, all you're going to be doing is the cloud save trick. Never restart the checkpoint. Okay? Okay. Well, if he's still a kid, Nightmare's waking him up, he's probably peed his pants, so time to change your pants, boy. Right, so for the first bit then, we're going to automatically and immediately go for the first storybook, which is on the table just to the right of us right there. So all you need to do is press the X button to uh, interact with it, press the X button again there, and then just flick through with the left stick until you get to the very end. Again, you can interact with the, you can read it and be all like, whoa, that's so cute. Or you can just not bother, but once you get to the last page anyway, where You can just press the B button to return, then we're going to interact with the door. And then he's like, screw that, there are monsters in the dark. And then we're going to interact with the wall just to the left of the door. He's still a little midget man. Or midget boy, shall I say. Oh, but then you can make yourself taller by going on your tiptoes. Yeah, because nobody saw of that. Next, interact with the bookshelf, and then you're just going to pick one of the toys up. Uh, with the right stick, by the way, you will need to do to move cursors when you're in this position. <laughs> then once you press B to return, head to the left, interact with the poster. And then that's all it is. It's just, it just kind of looks just like a bunch of green beans or something. Then interact with the window, and then we're getting the hell out of here. Why? Why? This is how all terrible adventures start. Tim. But not being with his sister scared him even more. Come on, Bray, you can do without your sister for a minute. 
Anyway, um, buttons then. So obviously the left stick to move, the right bumper is to jog slightly more, left bumper to crouch, and uh, the A button to jump. Yeah, that, that's pretty. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, uh, quite a few times in this game, then you will get these sort of paths, which are of the linear kind, the Gary linear kind. Um, so just enjoy the sights for now. For the next sort of 15 minutes or so, there's no way you can die, so don't panic your bums off about it. It's just a tutorial telling you what to do. Um, now, of course, if you can do it better than me, who just decided to jump in the air, then we're on to a winner. So, yeah, just keep following the video, keep following the path for the time being. Again, nothing can kill ye. But we are coming up to our first missable achievement here once we drop down. Now you see what kind of looks like cricket stumps or something at the bottom there. We just went past. Basically all you got to do is get an apple. One apple through those goalposts. Now he can't kick because apparently he's not exactly Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. He is just Oli Oli Oli. Oi Oi Oi. That's his actual name which I just made up. So yeah you just got to get one apple and try and walk it through those tiny little branchy looking goalpost things. As you can see with the edit there, it did take me <laughs> quite the while. Uh, you can go in either direction. As long as you get it in, you'll get the goal achievement. And then we can finally move on after, for me, about five minutes of trying, embarrassingly enough. So just continue heading up the ladder and then onwards. And once we climb then up the treehouse, if we interact with the desk right in front of us, um, with the right stick again, move over slightly to the left, interact with this figurine, and this is the Lilymore figurine. This is your sister as a figurine. So you can press the B button to pick it up. Then we're going to press the X button here on the match, uh, the sort of match box. Uh, you need to rotate it so that it opens up and the key drops on the floor. Oh, God. I just opened it up. Come in. The lovely people don't have all day, damn it! Okay, there we go, we're good. Return. Press the B button to return, pick up the key with the X button, and then you can interact with the door on your right to get the hell out of here! Now, leave, be free, my friend! So we are just going to head to the right from here, so nay panic, we can't actually get through there, so it's all good. A light in the dark. A symbol of hope. A spark of courage. Alright, now the kid's got some ball. <laughs> one ball. Ball, one ball. <laughs> Funny. Anyway, you can hear something 
incredible singing in the background. Um, Jesus, the, my ears! Uh, but just keep following the noise, keep following the path up, and it's going to be your <gasps> beloved smother. I mean, mother. It's not, it's actually Lily Moore, just to ruin the surprise view. What do you have there? Lily Moore asked. It glimmers beautifully. What a strange rock. Light as a feather. So now we're going to do the tutorial on how to throw it. Oh, it's light, it's white, it's a ball. Yes. Now, um, quite a few times in the game you will have to do a bit of uh, combat. It's very easy enough. All you, all you have to do then is press the left trigger to aim and then the right trigger to throw. Uh, now you've got to use the right stick to move it again. So there you go. Press the left trigger to aim, right trigger to throw. And as long as it is in the circle, you will hit your target. Oh, it's like we've never played a game where we have to shoot stuff before. So there you go. Once again, left trigger. So you don't actually have to, like, get your balls out or anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, as long as you just press the left trigger, he will automatically aim. As you can see, that was a fantastically crappy shot. Uh, so, yeah, just keep doing this little bit of tutorial until it is done. Bam! They call me two shot. But I missed the first one. Together, they tumbled down deeper and deeper through the old ruin. Bit of an unfortunate but hilarious fall right there, wouldn't it? It just sort of went, ah, that's nice. And down they went. Anyway, what we're going to do now, we're going to get another missable achievement here called Bouncy. So, all we got to do is follow Lily Moore. We're going to head up to the right here, up onto the rock, and then we're going to bounce five times on a mushroom. Now, I didn't know if it was five different mushrooms or if it's just the same one. Um, so, just bounce on the same mushroom five times, see how that goes. If not, just keep uh, hip, jumping, scop, dropping, jumping between the two. And eventually, the bouncy achievement will unlock, like, right now. There it is. Tidy boys. Right, so carry on then. Gosh, look at the size of that apple in teeny tiny bites. So does that mean we're like, you know, real, real small? We're just like the borrowers, really. And then there's gnomes who must be literally the size of a... Size of your... Granddad's penis. 
Um, so, once we <laughs> uh, climb up anyway, we're going to start playing with some gnomes. Bang, tidy, mate. Because why is it not an adventure without playing with a bunch of gnomes? So, left bumper to crouch, of course. You're going to head in to where the bell just trapped one of the little baby little cutie boys. Interact with this um, uh, lever here in the left-hand corner and then rotate it using the left stick. That's going to get this little wiener gnome out. Yeah, <laughs> little wiener out. Sorry. <laughs> right, so once we have uh, released the wiener, we can now crouch down. We can just head out directly in front of us. We're going to have to play a little game of uh, hide and seek in a minute, um, which is always fun. But again, for now, just follow, follow, follow the leader. Follow the lily more. They live peacefully in daylight. Before we follow the Lily Moore, though, if we head to where the house is, there's going to be a little bench just to the right-hand side of it. Interact with it, and we're going to pick up a gnome figurine here on the right, which kind of just looks like he's just part of the KKK, which is just what we don't want. Gnomes are racist, apparently. So, uh, yeah. Incredible, huh? Incredible discovery. Thank you to the developers of this game for pointing it out to us. Right, so once we've done that, we can head over to the door right there. And as you can see, two little wiener kids cannot open it up. So we now have to uh, enlist the help of gnomes. So what we're going to do, we're just going to sort of stand uh, just close in the middle of the path. And then a little cutscene will ensue. And then we've got to find them. Excuse me, sir. I haven't got time for this. I've got achievements to get. So the gnomes, the gnomes, are going to be in the same place every time. So first one is going to be here, just above the house there. Once you've seen it, you can press the X button on him. And then the next one is going to be slightly down to the left. Nope, it's not that guy, because he's not hidden, but he's just behind the bench in the bush. There it is. Third one then, if we go across the door, it's... Well, he's literally just standing outside the door. You can see his pointy, pointy hat, which is not good. Not good. Uh, the next one is just to the left of the house, literally uh, hugging the wall. Next one, if we go past the rock and just above the little roof right here is the next gnome. And the next one is hidden right in the middle of these flowers. Or whatever they are, scarecrow flowers things. Next one, if you go again just slightly left, just by the plant pot and the little tree stump. And then just above it in the bush. That's all the gnomes, and somehow the tiniest gnomes in the world are stronger than you and Lilymore, and can open the door. Should be embarrassed and ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> So next up then we're going to be playing one more little mini game before the real nitty gritty starts cracking on. So basically these little naked babies for some particular reason, these naked toddlers, which they do enjoy uh, stripping off for some reason, uh, toddlers are weird. Um, but they've got berries or something on the head and just like sheep we sort of have to round them up and put them in the pen. So that's all you got to do is sort of run behind them and get all four in. So if they start running in the opposite direction, just uh, nip off, sort of get off their <laughs> get off their butts, I suppose, and um, yeah, just herd them in. Let's stop talking now. Yeah. 
So what we've effectively seen just there then are the gnomes are uh, sort of slave owners there to the little toddler baby things, which is not good. Uh, <laughs> really not good. So uh, this is the first part there where you can actually die. So just do not jump into the water at all. You cannot go into the water, otherwise you'll die. This bit is easy enough. We're literally just going to be jumping across the lily pads. Uh, don't take too long though. I do believe they start sinking. Um, but this bit is easy enough. Now, if you do want to make a checkpoint, uh, all you'll have to do, so to make a checkpoint, what you'll notice, oh, almost messed that one up. So what you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner throughout a lot of the game, every sort of few minutes or so, is like a little flower. Uh, and that is just the save icon. But it doesn't actually save your progress. So if you die, you can't just like quit the game and come back to it. So what you have to do before... So basically, before you get to any section where you think you might die, whether it be a platform section or an enemy section, something like that, you will just quit out of the game. That will actually then uh, save and upload to the cloud. And then if you die, you will have to go uh, press the dashboard button, go to Bramble, go down to Manage Games and Add-ons, go onto your gamer tag. Uh, delete the local save only. Do not delete from everywhere. And then you will actually be... Uh, when you load the game back up, you will be wherever you saved it. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum, in all fairness, to do it. It gets kind of tedious. But if you want the full 1,000, then, uh, you know, sometimes it's just got to be done. If you don't care about that particular achievement, then you can just uh, crack on and enjoy the game anyway. Uh, without the pressure of it. Uh, but I will be showing you in just a little bit anyway, um, sort of the, you know, how it works. I mean, if you've done it in previous games, of course, as we just climb up here, if you've done it in previous games, you'll know sort of how to do it. But just in case you've never done it before, then I'm on hand to show it. So for climbing over this log, you're going to need to sprint across. So again, just press the right bumper and sprint you across. Slowly. They were both curious in different ways while Lillimor quickly ran along. Ulle could get completely enthralled. And suddenly, Ole was alone again. So this is the first instance then, where the first time I actually died doing uh, this little platforming bit. So. Uh, we're still by the well, so what you need to do then is obviously just press the dashboard button, go on the game, and just quit out. What, uh, you can then reload it, so basically what that's done is now upload to the cloud. So, again, I did actually die the first time here playing through this little platform section, but basically now that I have got it saved onto the cloud, if you do manage to die, like I said, you will then have to dashboard, go to Bramble, press start, Go down to Manage Games and Add-ons. Uh, go onto your profile. Press the A button on your profile. Delete from Local Save. Do not delete everywhere. And then once that Local Save has been deleted, you can then just reload back in and it'll put you back to wherever you uh, made the backup save. Now, throughout, uh, also throughout a lot of the game, what I will be saying is make a backup save here. That is, again, just by... Uh, pressing dashboard and then quitting out of the game. Uh, now, because I made the uh, little backup save here, it's actually put me a little bit further ahead to the left. So if you were just starting from the well, just go left a little bit until you can see these platforms. Um, again, this is an easy, uh, easy enough section, but the controls can be kind of clanky, a bit janky, and a bit wonky donkey. So you may think you've hit a platform when you've actually just fallen straight off the edge. So there we go. But um, yeah, so pretty much after every section that you do, you will get the little save icon in the bottom right hand corner. So if you want to make a backup save as, oh, hello, it's, uh, wow, that's that's my ex-girlfriend. Hey, baby, what are you doing back? 
Oh. You kidnapped my sister, though. Alright, so this is obviously going well. But yeah, so anytime if you don't feel comfortable with platformers, you know, I know um, uh, Power Picks made a good guide of uh, sort, of, sort of telling you where is best to save. But it depends on the gamer. If you're not amazing at platformers, like me, for instance, if you feel... Basically, just do it whenever you want. So whenever you feel uncomfortable, if you think, oh, I might die here, make a backup save. It does get tedious and it does get annoying, but it does help a lot and it makes the, the game a lot easier. And Ule was weak. He did not stand a chance. But soon, the sound of the river faded. Ole was happy to have firm ground under his feet again. Frog King made sure that his new friend did not drown. Right, cheers, Budweiser Frog. Man, he, uh, oh, show business has messed up the Budweiser Frog right there, hasn't it? As he licked our sister in the face earlier. <laughs> Always funny. Um, so, for now, again, it is just a sort of following the path type path. do that. He had to find where the big troll had taken her. It's getting dark and scary up in ya. Yeah. No, it's not. Never mind. Right, to so go past the um, berries or whatever they were in the um, wheelbarrow, we're going to go to the left, interact here with this little tiny door. And then what you're going to see, we're going to turn around and be like, Oh my god, what's that? And it's just a tiny little gnome. Is this an ambush, man? No, silly ting, be crying now. <laughs> what is it that our older parents used to say to us? Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Thank you for that fantastic parenting right there. Uh, nah, not every parent was like that, but you know what I mean. Anyway, interact with the uh, berries and everything. Push it forward until we can push it forward no longer. All right, stop crying. I'm getting your stuff, man. Jeez. So press the B button. We can jump up. Jump up to the right. And interact with the thing that this little um, GGG member wants. You know, GGG because the gnomes. Eh. Terrible. <laughs> he 
he has been reunited with Peppa Pig. And then that uh, he's given us the key so we can now go and open the door, which we couldn't get through earlier. Crouch down, of course, and head through and continue on your merry way. So just be careful here that you don't fall, there's a bunch of traps about. Um, now again, like I said, any time, like I said, that you see the save icon, if you're feeling a bit unsure or if you've got, just gone on with a lot of minutes without saving, it's always worth just making a backup save, just in case it uh, gives yourself a peace of mind. To just jump here, press left on the left stick of course, and then the A button to jump across, and then just do the same with this bit. Yummy spiky protein is delicious. This thing, which kind of looks like a giant, giant purple headed mushroom guy. <laughs> Doki then, are gladiators, are you, oh Jesus, ready? So we're going to be coming up to the first boss in just a second. So the first two bosses, basically, they don't have phases, rather they've just got sort of three sets of attacks that you've just got to avoid, but um, you can beat the first two bosses easily. It's the last three bosses which have the phases in which you can use the backup save trick in order to not have to replay the whole thing. Um, but this one is pretty easy as we just um, move ourselves across. He's only got basically two standard attacks, which we will um, inevitably just mash him up. So again, highly recommend making a backup save here. As you can see there, a little bit of an edit. It's because I made the backup save just before you get the butcher. Hell of a butcher. So what he's going to do then, you've just got to avoid his axe attack. There we go. And then what he will also do, once he does that, eventually some goop or something will drop down. So again, you're just going to avoid that. As soon as the goop drops down, pick it up with the left trigger, hit him in the eyeball with it. So there's the first one done. Again, just wait and as soon as he uh, goes to hit, just run away. He'll use his fist. Make sure to jump up when he uses his fist because he can stun you and kill you in one hit. And that's pretty much uh, just the attacks that he's got. So you just got to hit him one more time. Again, every time he slams his fist down, just jump up and avoid his uh, cleaver. There 
here we go then. So if you ever want to defeat someone who's trying to kill you, just throw some credit in their eye three times. Of course, that is the standard boss death thing. Three times. And uh, yeah, apparently he'll get blind from blood and guts or something. We've already uh, swam through the delicious entrails of life. Oh, that smelly smell. It smells smelly. Right, so now we can just continue on. Hello, everyone. Now, the way this camera is, it looks like something's going to chase us or a boulder's going to come down, but that's not the case, luckily. He had been in this warm bed. Now, he had almost died several times. His sister was gone, and he was soaked in smelly sewer water. So, yet another little bit of a puzzle here. So what we need to do then, we just need to drag this cart um, sort of as far right as we can. And then what you need to do is jump on the cart immediately as it's rolling down. And then jump up, as you can see there, the green vines. Uh, so we can jump up to the platform. So jump up as soon as you let go. And then try and aim for the middle. And there we go. So once we are up, what we're going to do is press the X button to push this down. And then we will be coming up to another very easily missable achievement. But get uh, So again, I highly recommend making a backup save just in case. So once all eight gnomes have escaped, what we can do is just drop down. Uh, apparently have no ankle pain from that. But you can die by swimming in a little bit of goopy water. Okay. So this is where we're going to get the next missable achievement here called Saviour. So again... Uh, once we open the door and you see the little flower icon save, I would recommend making a backup save just in case. If you do miss the achievement, um, for whatever particular reason, you can actually just press chapter select and come back here a little later on. It's best to do it now. So this is where I made the backup save anyway. And I'll tell you why. Because you need all eight gnomes and they are prone for getting stuck because they are stupid. So what you're supposed to do then is very quietly and try to navigate all the way through the traps but what we can actually do there is actually just head to the left hand side so we can just continue on down the left hand side path here again just make sure that you've still got all eight gnomes with you if you don't have eight gnomes with you at the end of this uh, you won't get the achievement so that's why i had to personally restart because they can get stuck on stuff because like i said they are stupid so again just make sure that none of them get uh, killed by the trap and then what you can do is, once we have cleared this last trap, um, it's just a straight exit. But again, unfortunately for me, anyway, um, one of them decides to get stuck right here. So if that happens, just, you know, wiggle it about and, you know, try and get them going. And try not to die, man. You know, you think that would be pretty obvious. So, providing you got all eight gnomes across safely with nobody dying, you will now get the Savior achievement. Goodbye. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit of stealth section with big old, <laughs> big old chunky nose right there. Oh. Okay, I guess we weren't much of a savior after all. <laughs> the Triple G's are now triple stamped and sent off to Mexico. Why Mexico? I do not know. But anyway, that's an angry looking pig thing, isn't it? So, here we go then. So, what he's going to do, or what it's going to do, is basically shine its light. So, what you can do is just hide in the grass. You can move in the grass as long as you're still crouching. But obviously, just wait until the light has gone to the left-hand side of you. 
and then you can simply nip off across. So always keep crouching when you're in the grass. Obviously, you'll know that when you are white and stealthy. Once it goes to the left, then you can quickly jump up. You can sprint, but make sure to hide in the grass. And then again, then obviously, when the light goes off to the left hand side, sprint to the next set of grass on the right again by crouching inside it. And once the light has gone, you should be uh, now free to just book it. You can hide in that bit of grass there if you want, but you should have plenty of time to just nip on through. Again, always worth making backup saves just in case you're worried and stuff about getting caught. I made a backup save at the beginning of this, and, I w and I'm going to make another one right here in the water as well. Um, again, obviously, you should know how to make a backup save by now. So purely because there are traps in the water which we cannot see without the light. So dro uh, drop down here into the grass, hide, make a note of where the traps are. So as you can see, it's one directly in front of us. So when the light goes to the left, we're going to head up to the next grass, hide again. Now, obviously, we can't go straight. You'll sort of have to go down and then up for this one. And then hide again. So again, you've got to be quick. The light can catch you. This uh, For these next traps, you have to go down a little bit and to the right. Um, again, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but a little bit of trial and error there, but make sure again just to hide in the grass. And as you can see, there is still three directly in front of us. So once again, once the flashlight or once the light goes to the left, we're going to need to go down and then to the right. There we go. Drop down, go to the right and then quickly get into the grass before you get caught. And now you should be able to just go straight into the next patch of grass. Yes, it's a hidey hole. Ah! <laughs> you cannot see me. So once this bit is done, we can head here. And we should. Almost got caught there because I didn't manage to... Well, you know, it's all good. But again, as you can see, the save icon was there. So if you want to make a backup save just in case, you are more than welcome to do so again. Otherwise, wait until the light goes off to the left. He can't actually catch you at this point uh, because you are completely covered with rocks. So you can just jump up here. As you can see, there was a bit of a shadow. So there we go. I was just being a bit uh, paranoid bum bums. Uh, but once he has gone to the left, we can now crawl. Uh, we can now go to the right and he will just about not catch us. So there we go. Climb on up. Right, so what we're going to do then, uh, for now you should be good because you are hidden behind the hand. As I said, if you want to make a backup save, of course, um, always more than welcome to do so. Uh, but we are just going to crouch around and to the left hand side. So what we're going to do, we're going to climb up on these vines. But as you can see, old uh, donkey nose right there will be looking. So what you have to do is wait here at the first one. Until he, she, it, whatever it is, nips off to the right. Once he does, go over to the right, but then again, just stay here, just underneath this next sort of pillar, sticking out, if you will. Then, once old ugly nose goes to the left, you have a free reign then to go to the right. Still, very scary monster. Ooh, I would not like, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't like to wake up to that personally in the morning, because I'd probably be dead. Damn. So, we can now head forward, and then just carefully go across the planky beam. And then we've got a little bit of swinging, jumping, platforming to do again.
Right, so, uh, these pine cones are actually a pain in the ass. They look cute, but all they want to do is hurt you. As you can see, you've now got spinal bifida, um, because you've just broken your spine, unfortunately. So, uh, now what I actually ended up doing here, I made a backup save because we need to now kick, to get another achievement here called Evicted, we need to kick this pine cone out. Remember like the uh, apple goal achievement earlier? So we have to kick him out of the cave, um, but it can be very easy. Uh, what I'd done the first time, I got to the end, went to kick him out, missed him, and then went down and ended up missing the achievement. So that's why, again, I made a backup save here, just in case. Uh, but all you got to do is just, yeah, keep heading to the right and kick him out. This may take a minute, it may take up to five minutes. It depends how good you are. And if you're anything like me, uh, you are terrible. Sorry. There we go then, so after a few solid minutes of being crap, uh, I managed to finally get it. Now, what you need to do, drop down here and then climb up to the left. So what you can see here in the blood, guts and just absolutely everything disgusting is some kind of creature lurking underneath it. So wait until it goes off as far right as you can and then just jump up to the next sort of bloody gut thing. Once it's to the left, you can jump up to the right. Mmm, this reminds me of eating bum. Blech. Right, once it goes to the, as far left as you can, you can now jump to the left and head to the next disgusting maggoty filled bit. We're going to press the X button here on this box to uh, just basically get rid of some gnomes. It'll also get us the bait achievement as well for sacrificing the gnomes. Sorry about that, triple G's. Then we can head to the left and get up without, well, without dying, which is obviously what we're always trying to go for here. Right, so once we've done that, we can now jump up onto the box, jump up to the right, or, you know, fall down and completely mess it up like I do. Mm -hmm. And if we press the X button here by the rope, we are now going to see a Nakan. Nakan. Oh no, is that a troll? Uh, whichever one that is. No, it's a troll figurine, sorry. It's not the Nakan. It is a troll figurine, but anyway, we've got the achievement for that, so once again, CLIMB your way into heaven, bear, bear. Oh no man, old fat nose has got us. That is a hell of a nos set of nostrils, mine, isn't it? So, instead of just eating us right now, for some reason he decides to put us in a cage. And of course, if you were gathered by a troll in real life, you'd probably be dead. So all you gotta do is just keep running to the left and to the right to uh, smash down the cage. Troll's not very smart right there. Uh, and then it's gonna open up and we are free to go! Oh yes, we are gonna free her. <sighs> All 
All right, this next bit can be just slightly annoying. So what, what you have to do, there are two little dirt mounds like we did with the Butcher Boss. You basically just have to uh, smash some of these pine cones, or smash all of the pine cones off. Unfortunately, they throw sticks at you, so you just got to kind of just try and do your best just to get them all off, <laughs> basically. Annoying tings. Ah! Ola felt bad for the ill-treated giant. Lemus might be big, but he had a warm stone heart. All he longed for was a friend, but his face scared away most. Even so, it seemed like he had found. Aw oh, man, that cute only when it was a friend. Look at his little smiley face now. I'll be your friend. Ooh, Bramble friends. And of course, anyone British and who's ever watched the Inbetweeners will get that. Not the Inbetweeners America, because that's terrible. Um if uh, there isn't in between is America, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just a thing, isn't it? British humour versus American humour. Americans can't quite capture the British humour, um, apart from the American office, which is quite funny. Still doesn't compare to the Ricky Gervais classic, though, does it? Right, so we've got our ball back. We were, we were on no balls, now we've got one ball. Yeah, man. Oh, I love your ball. I love you so much. And then we just get captured, because why not? Now this... Um, weird Pokemon looking thing is called Nakin. Jesus on a teeth bags. You are. You are very distinguishable, huh? Damn. Death by Snoo Snoo? Oh no, no death by Snoo Snoo today. Because uh, she got fr uh, statued by the light. So, job done. Ule was comforted by the morning sun. He had survived the night, but just barely. At least he had found the stone again. And it felt like it was his sister's way of telling him he was on the right path.
hedgehog friend. So, hedgehog friend is going to help us out here. Now, uh, obviously you would have had your music on. The music in this game also is bloody beautiful. It's really, really good. Um, but of course, because I'm scared that they'll just try and take all the monetization off me, and, you know, copyright infringement and all that, uh, there is no music in this guide. So, well, isn't that a shame? So, what we are going to do, we are going to just clamber up onto this next part. Uh, we will press the B button here to get off once you are on enough dry land. Uh, we're going to head around the big tree branch right here. And just in the stones is where the knackered figurine is. There it is. So press the B button to pick it up, and then we will unlock the knacken figurine. Then what we can do then is just get back onto the hedgehog and be on our merry way through the water. Right, cheers, big dog. Spank your hairy crutch. Now, for whatever particular reason, early on you couldn't go in the water, this time you can go in the water without dying. Maybe it's because it's not drown level, perhaps. Anyway, all you need to do is just get to the other side. This is kind of like a chicken cross the road joke. And then all you're going to see is a bunch of butts there on the log. We don't want to see that. There is also going to be another figurine, sorry, coming up. The Lemus or Lemus figurine, and it's going to be... Uh, right in front of our eyes. There we go. As soon as we get out the water directly in front of us, pick it up. Press the B button to pick it up. And that'll be the Lemus figurine done as well. There it is. So on PlayStation, I notice the trophies uh, just pop up immediately. On Xbox, it takes a few seconds and it always gives you the absolute paranoias. I'm drawn to the music, yeah. Now, uh, 
There is a whole bunch of platforms in here, so it is definitely worth making a backup save. I think I make about three just in this cave alone. Um, so obviously just be careful. You're literally just going um, to the right. With these uh, little platforms right here as we go up, and then up again, and then up again. So uh, with some of these platforms, so again, as you can see, the, the save section is there, so you can make a backup save here if you wanted to. Um, not this particular one, we're just waiting for it to go to the other side. I'll show you exactly which ones I mean in just a minute. So again, just in case you haven't or you have, always just make sure to make a couple of back, you know, a backup save with sort of wherever and whenever you can. Again, it just got the little bit of paranoia out of me, so you didn't have to start too far back. So what we do then, we just jump on this box here. Now this is the one platform that I was talking about. Then you need to actually stand on the right hand side or the left hand side in order for it to go to the right or the left. So can be potentially maybe a little bit annoying just to figure out first, but it's actually easy enough. So just wait until the next cage drops down and we can just uh, jump on it. So once we jump on this one to the right, what we're going to be doing is heading up. So you can probably tell the sort of clues where, uh, with which direction these sort of um, planks of wood are. And then you're just going to head up again, of course. Oh, 
Well, hello, somebody looks happy to be buried. Hey, this is so much fun, you guys. Hey, you guys. So we're coming up to a boss fight, but it's actually more of an escape. So we just basically have to keep running. Uh, now, what will happen here is Naken will appear from nowhere out of the water. Rrr, and then as soon as it begins and the camera shift changes, that is where I make the backup save. So I make the backup save right here. So obviously, just in case that you die from this, then, well, there we go. Right, so continue, just continue along the lily pads for now. So after all the running, jumping and running and flubbing through sludge, what we're going to do here is we need to avoid uh, some shockwaves. So what we have to do is just hide behind here. You can see when the shockwave hits the rock, as soon as it does, head to the next part and wait. As soon as it does, head to the next part and just wait. And this, uh, this part's you know, effectively easy enough here. So wait again and then just continue up. And obviously you need to crouch behind some of these stones. Uh, if you want to, of course, you can make backup saves, even in the middle of these sort of boss fights as well, if you want to uh, make it that bit easier. So I know uh, I'm about an hour in, but I'm actually gonna show you with these sort of, uh, the whole manage games and add-ons thing in just a minute. So obviously I'm making a backup save here. Uh, again, because it's always, it, like I said, it's, it's probably the one good thing about uh, these you know, these types of achievements where you can't die throughout an entire playthrough. Annoying, but the whole backup save thing uh, goes very well. So I've made a backup save, uh, which again, I highly recommend you do. Because uh, to be honest, now I've seen Power Picks uh, made... He basically said this game's uh, 2 out of 10 completion with the cloud save trick and a 4 and a half, 10 without it. Now, this is the first time that I'm actually ever disagreeing with Power Picks, to be honest, because if you haven't, if you're going to have to try and go through the entire game without dying, this is going to be at least a 7 or 8 or a 10 in terms of difficulty. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm only showing you this backup save here because I will end up dying and I just wanted to show you just in case. Uh, Although I am about an hour and 10 minutes late, so I do apologize for that one. Uh, so I'll end up dying in just a second. Silly sausage as I am. So there you go, pure death. So what you need to do then is obviously head down to Bramble, press start, go to manage games and add-ons. Of course, I explained how to do this earlier, but I didn't actually show you, which I do apologize for. So go down to your uh, save data, delete local save only, which was on the left, very, your very left hand side there. Sorry, I did go a little bit quick there as well, but that is how to do it in case you needed a visual. Again, I do apologize. I should have shown you that one earlier, but uh, well, better late than never, I suppose. Huh? Huh? Eh. Yeah. Anyway, so that's how you'll do, and then obviously you'll just go back to wherever you done the whole backup save thing. And yes, I know it can be an absolute pain in the ass doing this because it takes a good minute and a half to quit and then come back into it. So obviously what you'll need to do here then is just wait until the first boulder goes through, quickly go up to it. Um, obviously we're going to need to crouch here by this rock. Now, just be careful here. What we need to do, we need, we'll wait for the next boulder to start coming down. 
once you see it appear on screen, uh, just after the next shockwave, there it is, then you can jump across to the other side, hide behind it, should have enough time, and then you can hide behind the tree. Wait for the next two boulders to drop down. Don't go now because you'll get squished like an absolute ant bug. Wait for them to go down, wait for the shockwave to go, and then you are free as a golden nugget. Be careful here, we're going to need to crouch um, just by the grass. Uh, just remain crouched and then head to the right because old knackered chest right there is all like me. And then he blazes back down. Right, so finally coming up to the second story book. So as we drop down here, what we're going to do is interact with the uh, Skelly Skeleton. He's holding his friend's head for some particular reason. And there is the second story book. So again, have a little flick through, see what exactly happened to poor old Nacken Nacken. And uh, that'll be number two down. He marched into the village. Play they eventually died. His love was not spared death where he still lures people with his deadly Now again in this uh, particular section there are gaps that you can easily fall down so if you want to make a backup save again right now obviously you're more than welcome to do so just in case because like I said uh, some of the platforming can be a bit clanky janky and you can easily slip off. So, um, yeah, just uh, be careful anyway. Um, it's not as long as the other section. See, we're already done. Ah, that's nice. But we are going to be coming up now to the next part. Nacken's not quite done. So what I do highly advise doing, once we start falling down the uh, water rafters right here, we will make another backup save. So as soon as we start, now I made another backup save because you can easily die here. You've just got to uh, try and avoid the rocks as best as you can. Um, but that is why you made the backup save because I died once here. Unlucky. So this face on Nacken is, th this is our point of view. We are the toast, and that is you looking at your toast in the morning, that is. I will eat you. Because everyone's always cranky in the morning until they have their morning coffee, their morning coffee poop, and their toast, of course. Uh, it is just the ultimate, unless you don't eat breakfast, or you're one of those weirdos that has, like, avocados in the morning for some reason, where avocados taste like pure push and schnobs. Alright, so somehow we avoided that, and as we're going to be able to see in a second, Nakin had it quite... Oof! This is even more painful than it looks. Anyway, we will get the achievement there called Nakin for surviving against Nakin. Uh, so a couple of quick time events here, just pressing the A button, and then you got to walk forward and basically cry. Wee.
the bramble crawled closer and closer. He felt as if a darkness took hold of his heart and filled it with fear. was a light. Hello there, girl who I've never seen before. I am injured. Oh. Um, can I just, uh... Hey, I feel like I'm already falling for you. Ah, oh, there it is. Ooh, I know I'm blonde and beautiful, but stop falling for me. <laughs> okay, shut up then. Tuva was a light in the darkness. She had filled his heart with courage and the stone with her radiance. The bramble covers all where darkness has taken hold, Tuva said. Follow the light. Fair dues, cheers Brown Town for not robbing us. She could have easily just taken our one ball that we need and she could have gone off with it, but she has mucka muck appreciated. Anyway, continue to venture forth. Apparently we are not injured anymore, so... I don't know, the power of blonde women. They help you heal no matter what the situation. So we're going to drop down, we're going to head to the left before heading straight, because what we're going to find is another figurine. This one is the Tuva figurine, just with the branches here. So... Hello, Blondie, who helped us heal and didn't rob us. Much appreciated. Anyway, that'll be the Tuva figurine. Then you can head back. And now we can uh, use our ball to use a new power. So the left trigger and then the right trigger to attack. Now, what you're looking for on these uh, brambles uh, is the flower. So you'll know where to attack because once you press the left trigger, you can press the right trigger where there is the flower. And then that's pretty much it. Now... You can't die straight away. Uh, we'll have to go to the right here, by the way. You can't die straight away with these brambles, but they can hurt you. So I think if they hurt you enough times, you may die. So just be careful. Don't prick yourself.
Right. <laughs> Hello, Gollum Head. Right, so it is now time or... Well, it's probably worth making a backup uh, save right here. I ended up doing it because what we need to do now is a little bit of stealth section once again. Uh, so we obviously need to avoid the light. So what we'll do is obviously uh, hide into the grass. Wait until the flower goes away, the light. Jump across to the left and obviously hide behind the chimney. Now you're going to need to be quick here. You need to, uh, once the light dims, go to the left. Quickly press the left trigger and right trigger to drop the chimney down. So it may take a couple of seconds, um, but that's fine. Uh, just as long as you don't get attacked and, of course, die. Head over to the left-hand side and hide behind this chimney. And then just keep going around. You need to hide in the grass and then get the next chimney down from the brambles as well. was once a peaceful kingdom with the great king. Now, his image embodied the darkness. Well, that was lucky. I hope nothing else happens. Ah! You know it's going to. Sorry, got my Mrs. Crabapple laugh there. So we need to be a uh, jumper. Again, if you want to make a backup save here, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, because what we need to do uh, is just stay in the middle. So brambles are going to start attacking from either side. So what we need to do is just jump across... Stay in the middle as best you can because they come from side to side. So once we do that, again, just try and stay, uh, as I said, cleanly in the middle. Then when we get to this last house on the right, just make sure to stay on the left hand side of this roof. And then we can finally get on to Geodude. Lamus would always look after his only friend. Why, well, thank you, my Geo Rock chunky friend. Right, so then, a uh, little bit of a puzzle ish what you got to do again obviously try not to fall and die because that will avoid the achievement and you know that'll be annoying uh wait until it goes to the left you need to climb up push the big log out of the way and then we just need to come back down and we can make our way across easy enough at Poosley.
you ready to see your mother's face when you go downstairs at six o'clock in the morning as a child and put the TV on really loud? Oh, there it is. Wow. Scurry stuff, but we're not actually, um, yeah. So, obviously, we're going to be uh, kicking our ass in just a little bit, but not quite yet. So, again, I highly advise making some backup saves wherever possible here, because it is very easy to fall into the water. So, you'll need to hit the left trigger and right trigger at the same time in order to pull it. Uh, but just keep following the boardwalks for now. But, yeah, I fell into the water twice uh, because I am... Chili mange. So just be careful with this box here. This is where I died the first time personally. So give yourself a little bit of a running jump. Make sure you are sprinting and then jump across. Oof, and I almost messed, messed that up the second time. <laughs> there we go. Then just continue on. The shadows, uh, shadow monsters or whatever can't hurt you for now. So... Uh, well, they can't, especially if you press the left trigger and get your light balls up. Head to the right. So yeah, obviously with these paths and everything, there's no point in me really talking because you're just sort of following the video. Um, usually it's a pretty much linear path anyway. So again, angle snap your way down. And then it's a tiny little puzzle in order to get the boat going. So what you need to do here is hit the bramble over to on the right hand side. So again, left trigger and then right trigger. Sometimes it may take a few times for it to die. But I believe in you. Um, get this little rotatey yum yum climb climb down. And then you're going to have to be quick, a little bit quick, because it starts going up. So press the B button to return, jump up. And then just wait until you get to the top. Then we can jump to the left. And then get the bramble off this. And the boat is freedom! America! My pronouns are U-S-A. Correct! If you ever said that once in your life, I'm sorry, Americans, but that is goddamn cringe. Um, I've seen plenty of videos already on that particular subject. Anyway, uh, head out and jump across the gap, of course. What we're going to do is get another figurine. So we're going to drop, ju jump to the left. Again, be very careful not to, to... It's very easy to fall into the water. I did here as well. But if we continue heading to the left, right at the end here, we're going to get another figurine. This is the Karakson figurine. And if you don't know what I mean by Karaxen, well, you're going to see it pop up in the achievements right now. So there it is. Karaxen. There we go. Now, this is where I fell into the water because I wasn't paying attention like an absolute noob. So make sure to obviously avoid death and then head up. And then we're going to be doing some potion brewing. So first of all, very important, have a look on the right hand side and make sure to pick up the duck. This is for the proper burial achievement a little later on. So make sure to pick that one up, and then we're going to do some potion brewing. So press B to back out, go across to the other side, and then we're going to interact with this circle potion. Press the X button here to add the mixture, and as you can see on the top left-hand corner, that's the first one done. Press the B button, go back onto the uh, desk with the duck, where we see the cross potion, or p p mixture or whatever, we'll call it mixture. Uh, what, when those two are done, go to the uh, other side of the room there and pop it in the... Potion bowl. Meh, meh, meh. Now, do not worry, it should be the same for everyone every time. So, from the door on the left, um, this time we're going to interact with the top bottle with the three circles. 
press the X button to add to the mixture. Onto the left hand side case now and interact with the one at the very bottom, uh, which is the diamond. Press the X button here to add it to the mixture. So you should have the three circles and the diamond. Head over to the pot, brew it up, bye. And there we go, that opens the door for us. Press we'll get the achievement called Witchencraften. Or just Witchcraft for short. So, uh, storybook number three here is on the right hand side. This is pretty much unmissable because we need uh, to read this in order to get the lever anyway. So, oof, damn, some upside down stuff going on. Hot. Anyway, smash through this and then grab the lever. This will be the third storybook. Behold the truth. Oh my gosh, uh, not good, not good stuff. So what we have to do then is grab a bunch of books to stack up in order to get out. So uh, I do apologize, there's a bit of a weird edit skip right there. Uh, but grab the first book off the table and pop it down. The second book's on the right, just to the right of us on the bookshelf. If we have a look to the right, there it is. I don't know why you just can't climb the bookshelf yourself, but there we go. Obviously, I'm not that expert, is it? <laughs> no. Uh, go over to the right hand side and on this desk, the sort of main desk here, is a, another book. So we'll pick this up, put it on the pile. Alright everybody, back into the pile! And finally, the last book is going to be on the right hand side, just to the right of the desk. Not in the potion cabinet, but on the next side. Once we've grabbed that, we can jump in, jump up, and get on out of here. Which was ahead of him. Olle knew he had to hurry before she could complete the ritual. If he did not catch up with the woman, the swamp would swallow another child. But he did not know that someone else wanted to hold him back. A midwife who wanted more dark souls to take care of. So once again, it's definitely worth making a backup save here because it is very easy to, uh, there's a load of traps and everything in the water. So it's very easy to die in this section. So definitely make a backup save here. And as you can see, all of the planks are in the water as well. So uh, just follow the path here as best you can. And obviously if you die, you know what to do, but just be very, very careful. Alright, alright, guess what it is, it's time for 
the boss battle of life in just a minute. So what's going to happen? Um, obviously, left trigger and right trigger here to pull yourself forward. These crows are going to attack us. I don't know if they'll, they can kill us, uh, but just get your um, ball out just so they fly past you. Um, and obviously, once the boss fight starts, so what we'll need to do here is actually just uh, let her free so she'll drop into the water. This again is your mother who was just pissed off with your attitude. <clears throat> Anyway, once the boss fight starts, make a backup save as soon as we uh, begin. So as soon as you see your character here, we will um, make the backup save, obviously, just in case. But this is another it's sort of easy boss battle then. So what you need to do then is just have a look uh, all around the water. And what you're going to see then is something sort of coming towards you. The first one will always be a baby's crib. And the second one will be Karachsan herself. So all you got to do when she pops out of the water, just hit her with the with your light bulb, with your light ball. There it is. So as soon as she pops up, hit her with your light ball, and that is that. Now for some reason, the I, I wasn't getting any noises. Um, the sound was a bit of a weird one for me in this game, um, but you will be able to hear the baby's crib coming towards you, and you will obviously be able to hear the scream. So just keep a lookout. Um, but uh, just do this three times, and that is this boss done. However, you pronounce it properly, of course. Right, once she has been dealt with, then just go ahead and uh, Cinco de Mayo your way forward. So, we need to try and save this child, God damn it! Right, again, this is another easy part where you can't die and just go into the water. So, quickly make your way across to the other side. Hit the brambles with the light. Jump across and jump across again so you don't drown. Hit the brambles again and that'll get the boat going. So, just go back on yourself and then carefully climb the ladder. Now, I tried to jump onto the ladder onto the boat. Missed it, fell into the water and died. So, that's why I make back... <laughs> that's why I kept making backup saves quite frequently.
So remember with the butcher earlier um, and the whole entrails and we had to basically not be in the water for too long because, you know, there's something lurking underneath. Well, it's the same sort of thing here then. So uh, again, this will probably be a part where you want to do some frequent backup saves just in case. So what we'll do, we can just jump straight in front of us and head onto the first platform. And you're going to see it. It's not as obvious as um, in the sort of butcher levels. Um, but once the uh, sort of monsters dis disappear, then you can get to the next bit. As you can see, you can just see the water rippling behind you. Once it disappears again, jump to the next one in front of us. And again, it does get a little bit close. Fully wait until it disappears and then jump over to the right. So make sure you're all good and then do the biggest jump you can forward and then head over to the next little platform bit. So again, it's probably worth making another backup save here because we have to be quick with this bit and we have to get through the shadows as quickly as we can. And obviously, we can't let the shadows touch us. So continue on forward. And then what we need to do then is make a path through, but we can't stop and dawdle for too long because the thing in the water will get us. So obviously head straight. Straight as we can for the time being. And then it's going to go, we're going to need to go to the right here. So all the way right and then up and then continue on sort of up and right. And that is how we get through the shadow part. And that's how we not die and unfortunately though we are too late which is actually um as a man with two kids myself it is actually quite devastatingly emotional hits me right in the feels Anyway, once we walk forward, providing that you picked up the duck earlier on, you will automatically now get the a proper burial achievement for burying the uh, sadly now deceased child. Meh. Ulla had been too late. At least he could give the child a proper burial, so that it would not become another dark soul. Nah, bruh. Nah. Too sad. Because that wasn't even... Oh, man, that wasn't even a child, was it? That was like a baby and that. Hmm. Anyway. Continue forward while we wipe our tears away for a minute. There was a light in the darkness. Guilt and sorrow weighed him down, but the warm glow felt comforting. Follow the light, Tuva had said, and he trusted her. So you can't get lost, you can't die or anything in this bit. All you got to do is just continue walking forward 
and hit the glow of the glowing light. This is the librarian. The librarian that used to uh, be in your school. The gatherer of stories. Because everyone always had that, at least that one librarian. Come on, follow me, kids. <laughs> All right, Jesus. Anyway, uh, jump up and interact with the storybook. This is the next storybook. It is unmissable because we need to read it to get through to the next long section ago, anyway. There was a pig. She gave birth to the long... Magdalena succumbed... Weighed down by sorrow. The prince was the only... One day, Prince Ulrik fell... King Niels... Search the whole. His path was lined with the witches he had slain. Ulle wished he could stay in the warm light of the library. But he knew that he needed to reach the mountain and find Lillemur. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice. Follow me, little brother. I will protect you. So now we're going to be coming up to the first sort of tricky boss fight in the game. Um, plus we're going to be coming up to the one who has three different phases. Which remember, um, once you beat each phase you can then make a backup save. So if, 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 if you die on the third one, die on the second one, die on the first one. As long as you've made that backup save at the beginning of each phase. Then you don't actually have to go through the entire boss fight again which is just nice. Um... But yes, so, couple of things then, that old uh, Skogsra, uh, that's the heart we're going for, you think it's pretty open, you think you can just get there, but it's been covered by a thing, and she's quite an attractive for a demon grass woman, huh? Anyway, she's got a couple of moves uh, in this first phase that we need to look out for. Again, like I said, as soon as we begin, we're going to make a backup save, which is going to be right about... Big butt, by the way, which is right about now. So we'll make the backup save. Then we can hide behind the trees. So she's got a couple of moves here. This first one, she just tries and throws something at the trees. Next, she will try and summon mud. What we have to do is hit the dead bodies here off the trees. So you need to basically go all around the level, or sort of all around the trees and all around the area, in order to hit, get the dead bodies off. Once you see her uh, sort of glowing red, just hide behind the trees and you will avoid the mud, which is fine. She will also... Um, get spikes out of the ground as well. So once you start seeing sort of mud by the trees, just move away from the trees. So hit the dead body as quick as you can. So when this happens, and uh, it's only by the trees, by the spikes in the trees, so you just need to uh, move away from there. Um, but this is the first phase anyway, so just watch out for those three. Um, don't try and be a hero like I did. I tried just getting through it as quick as I could. It's much, much easier and safer to take your time. So just wait until she does an attack or two. And as soon as she does one, uh, quickly nip over to the next tree and hit the next dead body. So once you have hit all of the dead bodies, then you can actually hit Skogsgra herself. Um, 
And then, again, you'll know when you've hit all dead bodies, because once you've hit Skog's Gra, or Scroggy Grogra, whatever you want to call her, uh, she will actually take the hit and go down. Um, but if you try and hit her and she doesn't go down, it means that you are missing a body that you have not yet hit. So this will be the last one for this phase. Wait until she doesn't attack. Again, don't just don't be a hero. I tried it so many times and failed miserably. So once you are hit, you can just run up to her. You'll start making a sword. You can actually run up to her. And then, uh, yeah, we will be on to phase two. Damn, man, is it weird that I'm getting horny right now? Okay, I shouldn't have just told you that. My bad. So once you press the X button here, phase two will be coming up. So again, like I remember, as soon as we begin, make a backup save now. So just make the backup save now. Again, it is a pain in the butt, but that's all good. Uh, so this next move that she does, she um, spins around and makes flowers explode. So you've got to be very careful. Plus the bodies are higher up. So this time you go into, again, I was trying to be a bit more of a hero and I died so many times, so just wait until the exploding flower thing is done. Then have a look for any dead bodies at the top. Um, obviously, again, it's the same thing with the spice coming out of the trees, the mud, and she'll try and throw something at you as well. So it's just the exploding flowers with the extra move this time. Um, but as you can see, the, the bodies are higher up, so just uh, be on the lookout. Wait until she does an attack or two, then be on the lookout. What you can probably see as well, when you do hit Skogsgra, um, without hitting all the bodies first, she will actually, it'll actually tell you in the direction of where to go. Uh, so as you can see, I'm still missing one on the right hand side, somehow didn't get my buns exploded right there, which is tidy. So obviously because I hit her, um, it uh, obviously points us in the right direction, which is quite nice. So that's just in case you were ever wondering and you were ever stuck. So that second phase mashed me up quite a few times. The third phase, though, is actually uh, not too bad. It's a, it's pretty pretty much easier. But again, as soon as we begin and we stand up and we can uh, move ollie ollie ollie, oi oi oi, we will obviously make another backup save just to be on the safe side. So now you can make the backup save. So what you have to do then is obviously hit all the bodies around her, but now she'll start throwing uh, crap down from the sky. So obviously all you need to do there is just avoid um, everything from the sky. She will still do the mud thing and the exploding flowers thing. Uh, yep, so she still does the exploding flowers thing as well, so just be careful of that. With the mud, obviously you don't have any um, any trees to hide behind, you just gotta jump over if she does the mud attack. Otherwise, again, it's just a case of hitting all the bodies and then hitting Skog's gra gra out the ra gra.
So once that's done, uh, if we're feeling a bit stressed, we were having a bad day or something, well, it's time to get it out. We're going to get the murderer achievement here for stabbing Scogs for 100, 100 times. Um, but you basically, you're going to have to continue to keep mashing the X button. So um, you're going to have to keep doing the quick time event. Hey, don't bend over for us now, Han. It's too late. Uh, she does look kind of sad, but he did try to kill us. So... So from here out, just keep spamming the X button. Do not do not miss the quick time event at all, because if you do miss the quick time event, you will miss the achievement, and you'll just have to come back to this bit later on. Um, so again, just continue. It'll take about four or five minutes. I've obviously edited it down just a little bit, because uh, there's no point watching me do this for four or five minutes. Uh, but what you will do is just keep spamming the X button here, like I said, for about four or five minutes until the... Murderer! There's been a murder achievement on Lorks. Congratulations! You're a murderer and you got a rare achievement for it. Uh, so once that's done, you've stabbed her for good. I mean, Ollie must have been really pissed. To be fair, you know, she did try killing us with a whole load of stuff, so... Uh, you know, tit for tat, you know, it's, it was bound to happen. Anyway, everyone's sad, blah de blah de blah but we got two achievements for it, so we don't care. Ola, what have you done? Tuva's voice called out to him. Oh man, this is a lot of dead, uh, dead women, but uh, I suppose you don't want to get your head up. Get out of it. Jeez, man. Sorry, sorry. You've obviously been deceased a while and you're 
your bits are starting to rot and drop off, and I just had some on my head. That is why we're going to spew in just a minute. See, he had bits of blue waffle there, just smashed his square in the face. Uh, but that is uh, an extremely sad scene, uh, uh, one which, of course, I am uh, not making any jokes out of. But, you know, if there's wind blowing and, you know, you accidentally get your head caught in there, ugh. Mmm. It's like, it's like sniffing a hippo's butt, I suppose. Right, so now we're going to be coming up to some cheeky zombies, which, you know... You can't beat it. it. Makes the game all fantastic. Uh, right, so we're gonna head through the doors. Um, got about forty minutes left of the game now, in all fairness. So we're flying through it. So we'll interact with the desk here once we get into this section, and then interact with the diamonds. Cogs Grayat was thick, bro. Um, but yes. So once you have picked this one up, you will get the Skogs Grat figurine. And then what we need to do is interact with this lady who is looking a bit, uh, looking a bit weird right there. All you got to do is you got to press all these buttons simultaneously. So A, then L, B, then X, then Y, or whatever it is for you. But you do have to press them all at the same time. Once she lets go, I mean, she ain't going to need it now, is she? Um, <laughs> rotate the lever and grab the key. So again, obviously, make a backup save if you so wish, but what you need to do is remain hidden. So now we're into zombie land. So we're going to continue going into the water, which is fine. Um, and then go ahead and uh, just sneak through on the grass. Always remain uh, crouching uh, next to some zombies because they can hear you and they will eat your ass, boy. And not even in a good way. Not that, uh, you know, anyone's eating. Anyway, um, still continue crouching here. Go into the grass on the left. The zombies will not grab you because they'll go, There is! Uh, uh, no, never mind, he's gone. And then we can sneak through the water once they're all eating the flesh and bones off everybody. Eh? Then we can just jump up and then we should be free to go for a sec. So we're going to head into the left-hand side of the house now. Because uh, we're actually going to be grabbing yet another storybook. So if you just head to the opposite end... There's the next story book. Once there was a peace. Men started to follow her. Eventually, the villain. They started to execute them. The villagers grew more and more. The villagers had lost themselves. Then one night. When the moon shot, after a time, they saw th she was a shapeshifter that mi she ripped their chests open. Hung I mean, to be fair, it's very easy to get a man to do what you want. All you got to do is, uh, as a female, is just show a bit of butt crack, uh, a bit of butt, and then a man can get you to do anything you want. That may be a prejudiced thing, but it's just what men are, and it's what we do. We're just infatuated with butts. Right, so be careful again, obviously, here. So what we'll do is drop down, crouch down, go into the grass on the right-hand side. Because there ain't no way you're going to make it through the middle, sort of. And then we're going to go through to the opposite side. And then we're going to need to be a bit quick here once again. So what we'll do is... Get up to the end of the coffin. We need to stand up on the coffin. As soon as they all start running towards us, quickly drop down and then jump onto the other side. So quick as you can. <laughs> I almost get I almost got eaten and munched up there because I crouched instead of ran for some reason. Um, now this looks like a part where zombies will chase you, but it's actually not again. It's a nice safe part.
So just be careful in this room then. There is a zombie who he can't see you, but he can hear you. So if you, uh, you need to jump down and just crouch. Uh, so he should be just sort of over on the left hand side. You can probably just see him in the dark if you've got your brightness turned up. So just go behind, climb up under the boxes and you should be free to go. But again, make sure you're not running or anything because, uh, you know, zombies want to eat you, man. So once we drop down here then, we're going to do some more potion mixing, as it were. So, first of all, what we shall do, um, again we only need to make two potions which is fine, but on the right hand side we will go first, on the right hand side bookshelf, we're going to interact with the middle, the cross, mixture, so press the X button again to add the mixture. Then we're going to head all the way down to the opposite end, and on the right hand side here there's another couple to grab. What we're going to do is grab the one on the right, which is like the hexagon. And then to the left of the door is another bookcase, so we're going to interact with this bookcase and then we're going to get a small little cross symbol. Once I eventually press the X button. Get back there, you donkey ass! There we go, so the small one is in this little uh, potion bottle right there. So interact with the pot on the left, get that going. So then when this one is done, what we'll do is head immediately to the right. And then the one we need is on the left. So we'll grab the diamond one first and that to the mixture. Then the middle one, which is the square. So get that going. Uh, back out. And then we can head to the right hand side bookshelf again. And interact with the upside down triangle. Um, I'm sure there's another name for it, and the three circles next to it as well. You should have a diamond square, upside down triangle, three circles. Get the pot going, get the potion going, get out of my house. So we're going to head up and then we're going to head into the left side house right here. Uh, we're basically just going to grab a key. Now I thought uh, somebody had drawn some funny rem uh, funny things, but it just turns out it was just candle. So I was uh, quite disappointed. You know, the 33-year-old childish humour in me. Um, as you can see on the little piece of metal right there, I thought it was totally something else. Nah. Anyway, head down and go to the right. This will be our exit. So what we need to do then is just press down on the left stick and we can just jump across. We need to use the lever, climb up and then just basically climb up to the rafters. And once again, we're about to uh, just, uh, sorry, we kind of have to pull this um, other dead lady out of here. My bad, dog. There you go, just get her arm. <clears throat> Excuse me, bloody hell. I just get her wrist going. And again, it's the same sort of mini game as earlier, so you need to press the A button and then the X button at the same time, all simultaneously. Then she will finally release the key. God damn, she needs a tan. Uh, her arms look a bit crispy right there. 
Right, that will be our exit. Nothing else in this room, so we're all good. Uh, we are going to be coming up to another whole bunch of zombies. See, that's supposed to be a candle. That is not a candle. That drawing by the door, is it? Please tell me that's not a candle. I know it is, but anyway. So heading through this little uh, house section, over onto the right-hand side is the next story book. So um, interact with it, do the story, enjoy it, and get out of here. Diary. Our village still tries... After the horrible... Feels like the plague... People say they have seen an orb... Every morning... It is horrible... I wish I could be with him... Oh, I wonder how many women have got the dear diary I'm in love with him about me... I'll tell you, approximately minus one... That's how bad it is... Anyway, <laughs> once we've headed out of the house we can now continue forward... And we can drop down, be quick, just go straight, because there are zombies, of course, that will try and catch you. They're not going to be able to catch you from here, though. So when we drop down, we can just head down. The camera perspective will change, so we'll head to the left and smash a door down. Alright, so we're gonna have to head into the barn here on the left. We could probably just climb over everything, but you know, games don't like us to do that. Obviously, if you need some light, it's all good. Press the left trigger. Uh, but head down, we're gonna head to the right here, up the steps. And we're gonna be coming up to some zombies in the dark, which we will need to change our light off. Stay here for a sec, zombie will drop down. <laughs> what am's loser? Uh, there we go, now we can drop up. But again, make sure to crouch. What we're gonna do is crouch, drop down. Head to the right hand side, uh, hug the wall as best as you can. Don't worry, the zombie again cannot see you and he can't hear you if you're still crouching, so don't worry your nan's bum off about it. Uh, but just climb up onto the boxes here on the left. And again, just climb up, drop down. And we're going to see the lever that we need, so pick it up, go to the right and pop it in. Get out of my pab! Again, obviously make a backup save if you so wish, but there is another zombie in this room, so crouch down, be careful. Should be pretty much right in front of us, there it is, so we're just going to go around, climb up onto the box, and we can head down the old wooden pairs. Finally, I can smell brambles and grass instead of zombie aids. Nobody wants to smell zombie aids, do they, pal? Right, we've got to head into the next house anyway, which is a pain. But it's just a little cold walking session and a little jump scare at the end, so, you know, be warned. So again, this looks like it could be something like a big boss fight, but it's not. We're just picking up some books and uh, making our way out. So the first one's obviously right in front of us. Stack it on this book on the left. The next book is going to be if you go towards the altar and up these little steps right here. That is where the next book is. So 
So you can, you might be able to get away with three books to do this, but I'll just show you where all the four books are. Go to the right, head all the way down. That is where the fourth book is. You'll have to go back the way you came though, to stack it. Oh, and in fact, yeah, sorry, that is three books. What I meant is uh, you can get away with just collecting two books to stack on to make three to get up. You can probably do that. I just showed you where all the three books were anyway. And then breathe another sigh of relief as we drop down. But we're going to have to do a bit of running now because zombies are going to chase our arse. So again, obviously make a backup save if you so wish. Otherwise, we're going to head over to the left. There's no sneaking this time. We're going to make an absolute break for it. So... Drop down, continue to sprint, do not let go, but we're going to head to the right. There's going to be a little gap here that we can just climb onto the right. From here, go to the left, and then obviously down. And then to the right, once we get into this area, just continue on to the right, don't go anywhere else. Uh, zombies can break through the walls, of course. Jump over to the next wall, and it's going to shift perspective, just keep going down over the bridge. And you are safer than a safe thing in safe land. Right, so luckily for us then, it is just another... Easy climbing section. Again, if... Again, I, I keep saying it, but all, if you want to, and if you're feeling like you may just slip off at any moment, always make a backup save, of course. Otherwise, we're just going to continue climbing up, and then we're going to be grabbing the next figurine, which is the Pesta. El Pasta, El Pesta figurine. Oh, in fact, El Pasta figurine is right around the corner. So before heading up the ladder... Make sure to grab the next figurine, which is Pesta Potato. And just like Sideshow Bob with his rakes, you know, if you've seen The Simpsons, you'll know. And then just continue climbing up for a long time. Where were you when you climbed the ladder to heaven? So then, we do only have 20 minutes left, and we've got two boss fights still to go. And this is going to be the first one, so we're just going to keep jumping across the water here over to the left. And uh, Pester boss fight is actually not too bad. It's actually quite easy, in all fairness. Um, uh, well, a lot easier than bloody Scossgrad, or whatever her name was. 
So what we need to do then, we're going to start row, row, rowing our boat gently down the stream. If you see Pester behind you, don't forget to crap your pants. Jesus. Because this is pure stalkage creepage, as we'll be able to see. The eyes and everything. Creepy. Anyway, um, this isn't the boss fight. Uh, we'll basically go underwater or something. And that is where the boss fight will begin. Jesus, man, ju ju mate, bruh, if you want my number, just ask. You don't have to creep up on me. Anyway, this is where the first phase is going to be. So, obviously, as soon as we begin and we have uh, control of Ole, make a backup save now. Otherwise, uh, Pesta here has three attacks. The first one is going to be um, a rake, in which you basically, he sort of starts smashing it towards you. All you've got to do is obviously just avoid. You've got to just go through the middle. Then, he'll, then she will shoot rats out of her mouth, like so. So this is just an avoiding the whole rats thing. There it is. Sometimes it's easier to just jump over them. When that happens, you can then shoot his eye. So every sort of attack that you dodge, you can then attack its eye. It's a he, she, I don't know what the hell it is. So there's, here's the rake thing then. So just make sure you're going through the gap right there. And then again... Get one of the eyes going. There we go. Bang, tidy. And then the third attack it'll do is it'll basically be like a whole bunch of clones. All you've got to do is find the one that has a bunch of lines around his mouth, which looks like he's breathing. So if you get, uh, hit one of the clones, one of his mouths will be of him bleeding. Uh, breathing, sorry. So once you've hit him, uh, you can, you're then able to hit his face and then just continue on doing this until you are back on the boat. So it is a random sort of sequence of events, so sometimes you'll bring up the rat, it, it'll all depend, but they are the three primarily attacks that she does for this one. He, she, I don't know what the hell it is. Okay, creepy balls. Right, so for this next one then, um, what she does is actually flip, she flips her rake over, so she still pushes it towards you, but you actually have to jump over it this time, as you'll be able to see. There we go. She still does the rat's mouth thing, she still does the clone thing as well, but she also may uh, give you a new move this time. Again, make sure you've made a backup save as well. Um, but basically, she'll her face will appear from underneath you and she will try to eat you. So just as long as you uh, continue to jump forward, and you are not on her mouth, uh, you will not die. Uh, but that is just one of her new moves. Otherwise, the rest are simple as. So just crackle on, piggies.
telling you, if you start shooting rats out of your mouth at people, nobody's going to want to date you. It's just, it's simple etiquette. If you like someone, don't throw rats at them. Right, again, this is the third phase, so make sure to make a backup phase. This time with the rake, as you can see, it goes over your head and drags towards you, so you just have to be careful there. Otherwise, the rest of the attacks are the same. She's going to try and eat you from underneath, shoot rats at you, and do the whole clone thing again. So it's just a case of being careful, obviously. Again, making sure you've done the backup phase. But the rats seem a little bigger this time. Yeah, rat face. He had overcome the darkness. He had reached the mountain. He could finally find his sister. Ah, uh, that's nice. Uh, so yeah, we are actually coming closer to the end. For some reason, I thought this video was 10 minutes less than what I actually thought it was, but we are still getting close. Anyway, all we got to do is just get rid of all the bam the brambles. We will get an achievement called Bramble for freeing ourselves from the brambles in just a bit. Regret that he could not stop the woman from drowning her child. Regret that he had killed the shapeshifter in the forest. Now the mountain stood before him, and he wished he could ask their forgiveness.
He had reached the end that Tuva had pointed him towards. Now we're on to the final chapter. Moo ha ha, as it were. So what we need to do then is just interact with this bit of King's Nil. Um, hello. I'll have a look at the right. This will open up the way. Go to the right to get into the library, and we're going to finally finish the storybooks off. So just like the last one then, jump up into the middle, interact with the storybook, and we will immediately, providing you followed along with the guide and got all seven storybooks, the bookworm achievement will unlock right away for us. So that's job done. ...fell to his knees. The witch instructed he... Ulrich began to recover. The next day, King... Heartbroken. The witch... Having come to visit the king, she raised a mountain on top of King Nils. So once this last one is done, before moving forward, or before moving to the right, go down, have a look at this desk, and make sure to grab the Lichtgaben figurine. There it is, one with the back problem, the hunchback of Notre Nose. Uh, so once you've picked up the Lichtgaben figurine, that should unlock, then we can head to the right. And just continue straight on. Press the X button here on this bookcase and we're going to nip on true. And this is actually where we're going to get our last figurine as well. So immediately from here, turn around and look at the bookshelf that you just came through. In the top right hand corner is King Neil's figurine himself. Nice spiky crown bra. Uh, anyway, that will get you two achievements. The collector achievement for find, finding all the wooden figurines. And of course, we're getting the king's figures. Whatever his name is, figurine. To interact with the door on the right, press the X button here. And uh, ooh, we're looking quite dashing if I do say so myself. I might unkill Skogsgrad and uh, get her out on a date. So, we've got a little clock hand. This is going to come in handy because we need it to turn a clock. Yeah, which will be on the left-hand side of this room. It's going to be a big grandfather clock. There it is. So what we need to do then, press the X button to put it on. And then what you need to do is rotate it all the way down to 6, which is, is of course, VI. VI. Then press the X button again. Then put it all the way to 2, which is, of course, II. And then to 10, which is, of course, X. Just X. So press the X button on that again. That should finish that puzzle. Now we can go over to the right where the mirror was, press the X button on here, and we can grab the key in order to get the hell out of here again. So this is the sort of last bit of gameplay now, or the puzzle, the last puzzle before the big King's Nil boss fight. And this bit can be kind of tricky, so there's a couple of times you can actually make backup saves if you want, so you can get through each section, then make a backup save if you so wish. So again, it's literally just a case of avoiding the bash at the flash bang. So as soon as the flash bangs, there it is. Now we can head, you can actually make it all the way to the left. Um, if, you're, if you're feeling a bit paranoid, of course, you can hide behind other stuff first. Once the flashbangs again, we are going to make our way, uh, obviously, at the forefront of the screen here, so we're not going to get smashed open. Jump across to the left-hand side, wait. Now, once I get to this bit, I do actually end up making a backup save here, because I did die a couple of times on this bit, through my own stupidity again, really. So just wait once again until it flashes and bangs, then we can jump up. 
and then make sure to obviously now I got away with that just about got away with that actually and then what will happen we need to just stand behind this bit of shadow again just about got away with that one this is going to knock over the next part so just immediately head to the left so again, I did get quite lucky there. I took my time with it, as you can see, but I still managed to make it through okay. Once again, we're just going to um, have a look at the weights and just go across over to the other side. Again, stay here until the flashbang. Flashbang to coot. Meh. And then quickly as you can, head over to the left. Oh, and again, I just make it here. Jesus, man, I definitely rode my luck with this one. Make sure to wait in the middle part right here, because obviously you get your legs blown off. Then we can head over to the left. Once again, just wait right here. Once that's done, then we can jump over to the other side and we are free, free baby. All we need to do then is just hit the flowers off the door to get in. And then it's just a long, long run in front of us. gate that was meant to be closed forever, now opened. The mountain king who was meant to be hidden forever was now revealed. He just had to reach the sack before Lilimur ended up as the giant's dinner. So it's coming up soon, coming up soon, but we're just going to climb the sword. Then all we've got to do is do a bit of uh, walking across the brambles, and then we will finally get to the top where we have a two-phase boss fight. But I'm telling you, again, I tried getting cocky with this boss fight, um, and ended up it ended up taking me half an hour just to kill his second phase, which was, oh man, was a pain in the bowels.
Uh oh, that's not looking good. So, Baldy Mort, let's get on. So, as you can see, then, flowers are just popping out of his ting. So, what we need to do is hit the flower. Uh, don't try and get cocky and try and hit two at a time. So, basically, he's going to try and use his knife attack here first. Uh, once he uses an attack, then shoot one of the flowers. As you can see, I just about got away with that one. He, he is then going to use his fork attack at some point. Now, that knife got me a couple of times. It actually took me 10 minutes to beat this first one. Obviously, you make sure that you've made a backup save, of course, as the phase begins. Um, but they are his uh, only two attacks here. So just watch out for his knife. Hit the flower. And then he's going to go with his fork. Tries and smashes it down. So just keep doing this, repeating this, until all the flowers are down and the next phase begins. So this one took me a bit longer to do. Again, make sure, remember to, very important, make a backup save as soon as we can. And as soon as we regain control of Ole, make sure to make a backup save so you've only got the second phase to do. But basically, he's got this uh, staff, if you want to call it that, and a sword. Again, we have to get all the flowers off quick as we can. Um, but what he will do then, with his sword, he, you need to jump over it when he slices it. He will do it twice. The first couple of times he only does it once, but he will start doing it twice. When he smashes his staff down, again, you have to make sure to uh, be careful not to, to get crushed. These will also bring stalactites down. So uh, it can be, a, get a it can get, uh, it may get a little uh, a bit of used to, to being timing. That's what I'm trying to say, sort of. But basically, when he powers up his chest, that's when you need to hide behind one of the stalactites as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he actually did it for me, but, <laughs> weirdly enough, but yeah. So, when he uh, smashes up, uh, open his chest, and his chest starts glowing, you need to hide behind one of the stalactites, like now, actually. Just about got away with that one, and bam, that is how we do that. And apparently, he was just a bit blind. So he's like, oh, sorry, miss. I didn't mean to try again. I'm just a bit blind. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's so easy to make those boss fights and boss phases look very easy. But my God, I was starting to get p -p -p pissed off with um, the amount of times that I died. And that purely is only because I tried hitting all the flowers and I ended up getting crushed by one of the stalactites. So, again... May take a few tries, but as long as he's still doing the uh, deleting the local save, which I'm going to tell you why I did not get the achievement. Um, but this is basically the third and final phase. It's not really a phase. Uh, the main two are done. All you're going to do is walk forward, climb onto his sword, grab his beard, and that is going to be the end of it. The source of the curse blossomed. King Niels tore the bramble rooted in his back and brought it all to an end. The only way to get to Lillimor was now up and in.
Tuva had one last gift to give to Ole. <coughs> and with the Mountain King dead, his prison started to crumble. <laughs> the Lemus would always look after his friend. So then, here's the story about why I didn't get the survivor achievement for not dying in a playthrough. So there was one point, and I remember it vividly now, one point I was having a hissy fit about a particular section. Um, I'd already made the backup save, but when I died, I'd accidentally quit out instead of deleting the local save. Um, so when I continued again, it put me back to where I was, but I think that had something to do with it, which is uh, an absolute pain in the butt snatch. So... Again, that's obviously just something to be careful for. That's why I said to be very careful when you're doing it, because if you make a mistake, like quitting out instead of deleting your local save data, I think um, that done it, because obviously restarting your checkpoint, you cannot do. Um, um, and I never did. So yeah, it was just a bit weird, bit annoying, but there we go. So anyway, all we got to do then is interact with a couple of things here in the room, interact with the window, and that is the end of the game. So hopefully what you will get here is the Home Again achievement and the Survivor achievement. I really, really hope you do and I hope you did. Um, or you're going to be like me and go, is it coming? Is it coming? No, because I messed up once. <laughs> Fantastishimo. Anyway, that is Bramble, the Mountain King, guys and gals. So, uh, well, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the game. And I hope you enjoyed the guide as well. And if uh, if the guide helped, of course, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, and share with a friend as well. Big massive shout out to all my Patreon supporters, uh, past and present. All my YouTube members as well. So thank you so, so much. Um, your support is always welcome, as is everyone's support as well. So thank you so much. But there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. I shall see you in the next Game Pass game, guys and gals. A big old love.